I love watching the NBA, the National Basketball Association games, and I love following my favorite teams. So the Nets and Golden State, the Lakers, but I don't mind watching a bit of Wemby from the Spurs as well. And what's absolutely stunned me is the culture of trading players, you know, in the teams in the middle of a season as the fortune of the championship plays itself out. Like, I can't quite get my head around how teams will cough up millions of dollars for a player who is perceived as a gun. You know, they're going to be brought over. They're going to win them the championship. Everything's going to be great if only they have that one player. Only to work out about four to six months later that the team culture has been turned on its head and because they're not a great fit for the personalities and values of that team, city or organization, it renders this gun player pretty much ineffective. And if you're not a basketball fan, have a think about what, like, what about those amazing designer shoes that you coveted and saved for, for much longer than you care to admit? They cost a bomb, right? But will you confess, even if it's just to me, that once you got them home and felt giddy from the incredible thrill of unpacking your purchase, that it only took a couple of short weeks before you realised that you might only be able to wear them with one, maybe two outfits, that they are, in fact, pretty uncomfortable and not well matched with the rest of your wardrobe. And maybe, just maybe, they're not all they're hyped up to be. Well, it's this dynamic that reminds me of how some couples book popular and fetid wedding vendors. And for example, how some of the big name and talented photographers that I've worked with are sometimes a pain in the ass to be around. They don't get along with everyone else. They make things more difficult than they need to be, and they don't deliver what they say they will when they say they will. They don't communicate well or won't pitch in to solve a problem. They might have demands of the other vendors around them but aren't willing to make any compromises themselves. In my eyes, they are the wedding industry's multi-million dollar basketball trades or your expensive designer brand shoes that are just not worth it in the big scheme of things. I may not know you personally, but I can say without a doubt that you don't want that for your wedding. You want ease. You want to be surrounded by problem solvers. You want to have their technical expertise and people with great energy who will not only do their job, but help you to get excited too. You want to choose the right team the first time around because it is super uncomfortable to have to let a vendor go because of contracts, potentially costly as well. So to kick off this year, I'm going to teach you how to research, find and book in the best wedding vendors that align with your style, budget and personality. Let's get stuck into it. When you first get engaged, it's all too easy to get swept up in the excitement. Oh my God, they really like like you. The interest from your family and friends, you know, like within five minutes, so when are you getting married? And the chemicals that are rushing through your brain, they're quite simply intoxicating. And at this point, you are absolutely forgiven for not thinking practically. Who wants to be practical, realistic or responsible anyway? I can almost hear you saying, Camille, life's too short. Let's get hitched with our 200 nearest and dearest in Tuscany, babe. I hear you and I get it. And this is just one of the reasons why you want to give yourself the time and space and allow for the champagne buzz to wear off a little before you start making any plans, commitments, promises or deposit payments. You're just not thinking straight and it feels incredible and wonderful, but it is not the best time for committing to anything other than each other. And then... Once you've done your reveling in the moment and soaking up the love, you're going to need to lay your foundations for your wedding. And I'd highly recommend you have a listen to episode 22. These three important first steps in your wedding planning change everything because they do and they need to go first. Head back, have a listen to that. In short, it's about firstly, what does your marriage and your wedding mean to you both? And then agreeing on and potentially compromising on 
<laughs> yeah, it's shocking, compromising on your top three and then nutting out your budget. What's the upper limit and where is this money coming from? Are there strings attached? And from there, you're going to start to assemble your team with this foundation in mind. And your top three and your budget are going to dictate how much you have to spend on each vendor. So if your top three was something like destination wedding venue, live music, and excellent photography, then you know which vendors, your venue, your band, and your photographer that you want to focus on, spend money to be happy with, and book in first. Your search for these vendors is easiest if you start off with a really thoughtful and a systematic approach. So here are some tips to help you with this search. You're going to be defining your style and vision before you start contacting people. You want to know the overall atmosphere you want to create because this will guide your choices in selecting vendors who can bring your vision to life because not all suppliers specialize in the same types of weddings. Just like you wouldn't book a self-taught at-home baker who specializes in cupcakes and cookies to create an elaborate five-tier huge wedding cake. Each vendor has their own speciality and field that they concentrate and work most frequently in and on. One of the biggest mistakes I see couples make in booking a photographer especially is looking at them and booking them in simply for their price and availability only. And then they notice, generally just before their wedding or when they get their photos back, that the photographer's shooting or editing style doesn't match their expectations or what they even like. And in case you want to know, no. Generally, wedding vendors can't and won't change what they do for you. The style, the way they create their personal brand, it's a horses for courses situation. So nutting out your style and vision for the day, what you're really looking to create, is it a three-day festival vibe? Are you outdoors for most of it? Are there teepees? Are there food trucks? Is it heavy with culture and personality and super light on tradition? Or are you in a church? Are you wanting to have a sit-down meal in a function centre or a beautiful restaurant? The different style and vision of your wedding, how long it goes for, where you want it to be held, will change the type and styles of vendors that are going to work best for you. And then with your style and vision in place, the next thing you need to think about is who is going to be your wedding planner. Because if you can afford a professional one, please hire them. A wedding planner can be an invaluable resource in helping you find and book really talented and reliable wedding vendors. During your initial consultation with a wedding planner, they will go through this. They will go through your vision, your style, your budget, so they can then guide the selection of your vendors with those who align with your preferences. They remove the need for you to do the legwork. Wedding planners generally, and I know that some take commissions and are paid kickbacks for referrals, but a lot of the time, they'll provide a list of recommended vendors in the different categories. So think venues, photographers, florists, caterers, etc. People and businesses who they have history with, experience of, and often have established relationships with them. They are trusted vendors. A wedding planner doesn't choose or recommend to you vendors that are not going to make them look good. If they recommend to you vendors that take a lot of work, who don't deliver what they say, who are difficult to communicate with, it not only reflects on them and you know makes them look like they don't know what they're doing, but also they're making their own work harder. So any wedding planner worth their salt is going to recommend people who are going to work for you in your vision, also work for them and bring together a great team for you. Wedding planners might also have access to exclusive deals or discounts 
package offerings from certain vendors due to their ongoing relationships. And this can result in savings for you. A lot of the time, wedding planners are also coordinating vendor logistics, times of arrival, making sure that everyone's present for rehearsals and for bump ins and bump outs. They're also looking at emergency contingency plans for you. So in more ways than one, wedding planners can really save you in this step of your wedding planning. But if you're not able to afford a wedding planner, then this is where the rubber hits the road. You've got to do your own research. And for me, a dedicated wedding journal we are looking at having some unbridly wedding journals available for you, and I'll have more info on this to come really soon. Or alternatively, a trusty Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheet can be worth its weight in gold to record everything because this research process starts off quite manageable and fairly easy to remember, but it gets complex real quick, and you need to have these things recorded. You want the dates that you got in contact with people. You need their prices there. You need to have links to their terms and conditions. And you need to keep track of who it is that you're chatting with. Sometimes wedding vendors as well have very similar names. The businesses have similar names. And you want to be able to tell the difference. You're going to set up a list of your requirements for a particular vendor. So let's say it's your photographer. Let's start with that. And then allocate a rough budget to that category of photography and your non-negotiables. So it might be something really simple on a new page of your journal or a tab on your spreadsheet. It might literally have the title photographer, a dollar amount. They might be in your top three. You might be allocating a decent chunk of your budget to them. Let's say for argument's sake, it's $4,500. Then you're going to put down your non-negotiables your details about your photographer that you really need to have, an outline for what your perfect wedding photographer might look like. You might be looking for people who are local to you, or especially if you're having a destination wedding, you might want someone who specializes in that destination and then any personal traits that you think are important. So I might write down, photographer, $4,500, someone experienced, local and easy to talk to. And then you might be going for products or services that they offer in their work. So for a photographer, it might be offering printing options for an album. You might be looking for minimal posed photos, a very modern and candid style of photography. Maybe you're petrified, like everyone else, of being in front of a camera all day And so you're going to need someone who's going to make you feel as relaxed as possible, super comfortable, and you really don't want to know they're there for most of the days, except for your family, you know, your group photos, you don't want to know they exist. And so that is the kind of photography style that you're looking for. So you're building out the equivalent of a looking for section in a dating profile, because it's pretty much what you're doing here. You want to match up your needs with what the photographers are going to offer you, both personally and professionally. And this is where another interesting anomaly of weddings comes into play. If you had a sweary, chocolate-addicted, wine-sipping fairy godmother who could help you with your wedding planning, what would you wish for? Perhaps no more waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, wondering what you've forgotten, or fretting about your RSVPs. Maybe no more spreadsheets or post-it notes or endless to-do lists. Well, I can help you with all of that. Websites is an Australian wedding website builder, guest management software, and wedding project planner all in one. Why is this such a game changer for you? Well, imagine everything to do with your wedding being in one place, updated in real time in the cloud, shareable to anyone else that's helping you, password protected for your guests, with notifications to tell you what needs to be done next and by when. It's amazing, right? 
I love how easy websites is to set up and use and how there are no ads on the platform yelling at you to spend more money on your wedding. To get started on your very own free wedding website, just head to websites.com. That's W-E-D-S-I-T-E-S dot com and enter the code UNBRIDELYPOD, that's UNBRIDELY, P-O-D, to get 10% off their paid planning tools. The link is in the show notes. So not every photographer whose fees are under $4,500 and are local will be the right fit for you. And likewise, you may not be the right fit for that photographer either. It's something that I find engaged couples take a while to get their head around because it's not like going into a shop and buying something off a shelf. You know, choosing your wedding vendors is not like taking toothpaste off the shelf at the supermarket, paying for it and taking it home. They are business people. They are artists. They're creators and they're performers. And I would estimate 99 out of 100 of them got into working in weddings in the first place to fulfill their couple's needs, for sure, to deliver a service, a product, and to really glean the joy from that, but also got into weddings for their own personal needs as well. But please don't take it personally. We try to say this to vendors all the time and it's really, really hard. It's super hard, especially, you know, if I think about myself as a celebrant, when a couple comes to me and says, are you available on this date? We'd like this type of ceremony. We're at this venue. This is our budget. And you fulfill everything they've told you about. You might even have a meeting with them. Let's say we jump on a Zoom. We have a chat for half an hour. We talk about their ins and outs, their dogs, you know, how mum and dad are going to walk them down the aisle and how they really want a special song as they walk back up the aisle as a married couple. You have this incredible interaction with them. You feel like it's gone pretty well. And then you get an email a couple of days later saying, thank you so much for your time. Such a pleasure to chat with you, but we've decided to go in another direction. We've booked another celebrant. We wish you the very best for the future. And it's crushing. It's really, it's so difficult to get your head around because you go, oh my God, I'm horrible. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> you know, what was it? And you want to go back. You want to go back and go, what was it? Why, why, <laughs> why didn't you like me? Why didn't you book me? Why did I think it was all a go and you said no? It's an unusual interaction in this day and age to have something look like it's a really good fit. And yet when you get face to face and you start chatting, it's not. So please know that it is completely human for sometimes for it to sting a bit because vendors likewise can come back and say, look, that sounds wonderful, but I don't think we're a great fit and I wish you the very best for your wedding day. And here's some recommendations of my colleagues who you might want to get in touch with and have a look at their work. It can be a bit confronting and I find it's actually probably some of the most honest conversations that happen are between a wedding vendor and an engaged couple because they're really getting down to what matters and what's important. And it's not often that we have these raw and very real conversations with people. You know, nine times out of 10, we just ghost them, right? Which while I'm on that topic, if you reach out to someone and and ask them about their business, they take the time to write back to you Uh, sometimes create a quote, sometimes make room in their diaries, sometimes set up a client profile in their customer relationship management software, then please, please, if you're not going to be booking them, just the most simple email and you can have that saved somewhere and just copy and paste it. Thank you so much for your time. We've decided to go in another direction. It's all you need. It's all you need. But ghosting, I don't know. I think it's a bit rude and It also allows a wedding vendor to have closure on a particular date as quickly as possible because if one person is getting in touch with us about a certain October in 2025 and if you're not interested immediately through price, through communication, through personality, whatever it might be, then the vendor will know straight away and go, oh, 
okay, no one's looking at that date, beautiful, we're still open for business on that particular date. Because a lot of different wedding vendor categories are based on availability on a date. A lot of the time, it's just one person working in a business, you know, a sole trader, if you like. There are some circumstances of agencies who, if, you know, one of the DJs is not available, another one will step in and they can mix and change to suit personalities and your requirements as well as date. But please, yeah, keep in mind that the availability of dates is a super crucial lever for both yourself and the wedding vendors that you're getting in touch with. Okay, so we've got a profile. We've written or we've set up a profile, but also know that the right person, business or creative will usually come along once you know what you're looking for. So don't get panicked. Don't get too panicked. Keep looking, keep searching. You're going to use online resources like wedding platforms, vendor directories, social media like Instagram, TikTok. You know, you're going to discover a variety of vendors. You can visit expos or open days at venues if that's your thing. They can be really handy to suss out a lot of vendors at the one time and you also get to ask questions and frequently you get to see examples of their work as well. You're going to check out full portfolios of their work and look for consistency in their style. You can read reviews, you can ask for recommendations, but always temper them with your looking for profile. Because for example, your sister celebrant might have been great for her wedding and worked really well for her lunchtime celebration. But if you're wanting something more out of the box, energetic, you might need to consider a different celebrant for your wedding. It's another horses for courses thing to consider. Recommendations are always coloured by the person who's recommending them's personalities, their budget, what they were looking for. The recommendation might not be worth the same weight when you look at it from that perspective. And so then you're going to contact your favorite vendors and ask for a quote or a pricing guide and their availability for your date. Please give these wedding vendors as much information as you possibly can so they can give you a realistic quote because, you know, if you can list your venue in that inquiry, there may be travel involved for them. Their quote might include out-of-season blooms, certain tariffs or public holiday rates on certain days. There might be custom builds or purchases even required to fulfill your vision. And wouldn't you rather know these costs now than later? Yes, you would. You want to give them as much information as possible so they understand your expectations. And also, the more info you give them, the more excited your vendor can get too. And then you're going to end up with a short list for each vendor category. They'll fulfill most of your looking for profile, you know, your little dating profile. They'll be within your budget or pretty close to, and they'll be available. And it's at this stage that my belief is you really need to meet with, either in person or on a video call, your short list of no more than three vendors in each category. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I truly believe that a talented supplier, someone who is very good at their trade, their craft, creating their product or delivering their service, is only half of what is required as a wedding vendor. Because their personality, their attitude, communication skills, their business skills and their energy is going to make up the other 50%. So when you're chatting with your potential wedding vendors, you really don't need a massive checklist of what to ask or a bunch of interview style questions. What you're really trying to find out in this video called or person to person interview is who are they? What are they like? Are they enthusiastic, prompt, excited, communicative, quirky, expressive? Do you feel like they get you? and what you're about, and that they're listening. (laughs) You're looking for a good person, whatever that may mean to you. Because in the lead up and on the day, that will be what matters a lot more than if they use a Canon or a Fuji film camera. And finally, trust your gut. 
beyond the logistics and the contracts, you're going to have those, you're going to have terms and conditions in place, you want to trust your instincts and choose vendors who you feel the most comfortable with. Building a rapport with your vendors is essential for this smooth collaboration. Remember, finding the right vendors is a personalized process and taking the time to research and choose those that will align with your style and vision will contribute to a more memorable wedding day. If you have some other tips for finding and booking the very best vendors, I'd love to hear them. You can DM me on Instagram at unbridely or send me a 90 second audio message via SpeakPipe. The link is in the show notes chat with you next week. That about wraps it up for this episode of the Unbridly podcast. For the links and resources we mentioned, please head to the show notes. And if you love the show, please review and subscribe on the podcast platform you're on now so you don't miss out on a single episode. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, weddings are a team sport. Catch you soon.